Good morning, and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Let us praise God together. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. God is near. We rejoice in the hope of Christ's coming. Let us worship God. Let us pray together. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things that hinder love of you, that when he comes, he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, we light the fourth candle of Advent. We hear your angel Gabriel and witness the faith of Mary. Fill us with your grace and light. Mary was a young, strong, spiritual woman. Even though her life was not easy, she heard God's voice and said yes. Her song was a prayer that would uplift those who were downtrodden. Her lyrics shattered the proud and called the world to change. She would bear within her the promised child, Jesus, the light of the world. This Advent, we respond to God's beckoning to us all. Revealing God, visit us, us and fill, fill us with your spirit. spirit. Bring, Bring your, your good, good news to life within us. 
Give us courage to carry your light into the injustices and shadows of this world. Amen. Hello, and welcome to all of the children who are joining us for worship. Today, our Bible story is taken from the Gospel of Luke, and it begins with the story of a woman, a woman who was fairly typical of women in her time. This woman was poor, like most people were in her area. She worked hard to draw water from the well in order to cook and to clean. She probably took care of animals and grew food for her to eat. And she was engaged to be married. Now, can you guess who this woman is? If you guessed Mary, you are right. This is Mary. And though she was fairly typical of women of her time, she was a part of an extraordinary story that changed the world. If you remember, one day Mary was alone in her room when suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, Mary, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God, and you will have a child, a son, and name him Jesus, and he will show God's love to everyone. Well, not surprisingly, Mary was frightened and concerned about what this might mean, but she was also very excited about this news. And she became even more excited when the angel told her that her relative, Elizabeth, was also going to have a baby. So Mary ran to the home of Elizabeth and her husband, Zechariah. And as soon as Elizabeth opened the door and saw Mary, the baby in her womb leapt for joy. And then Elizabeth said something remarkable. Elizabeth said to Mary, How is it that the mother of my Lord comes to see me? That is, Elizabeth was the first to recognize that the baby that Mary was going to have, that baby Jesus, was going to change the world. That Jesus was the Messiah, the one that people had been waiting for, the one sent from God who would be their Lord, their Savior. Elizabeth recognized that Mary's baby was going to change everything. See, Elizabeth knew that something new was coming into the world when Jesus would be born. And she was so happy. She was rejoicing in her heart for the excitement that would come and how it would change the world. This week, as we prepare for the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day, we too can have the same kind of excitement in our lives as Mary and Elizabeth did, as we recognize that that baby who will be born, that baby Jesus will become our Lord, our Savior, and will show us how God's love is here for everyone, both then and now. Will you pray with me? Loving God, thank you for the glory of this story that tells us that the baby Jesus will be born into our lives once again. Jesus will show us how God's love is available for everyone and that we can love God and follow Jesus in all that we do. 
Let our hearts rejoice and be happy for the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day. Amen. Amen. Hear this reading from Luke chapter 1, beginning with the 39th verse. Listen for the word of God. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment 
of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's scripture reading features a woman who is easily forgotten in the Christmas story, namely Elizabeth. If someone were to ask us to name all of the women in the Christmas story, most of us would stop at Mary. Mary is clearly the star in this drama. But if there is one person in the story we should emulate, I submit that person should be Elizabeth. If you don't track Elizabeth, you can easily miss her. She comes and she goes. She's only mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, and uh, even there, only eight times. After today's reading, she disappears completely. This is what we know about her. She was old. Her age is not disclosed. All it says is that she and Zechariah, her husband, were, quote, getting on in years. However, tradition holds that Elizabeth was around 88 years old. It is interesting how we tend to think of Elizabeth and Mary as about the same age. Art has contributed to this. See here in this early painting of the meeting between Elizabeth and Mary how they appear to be about the same age. But let us make no mistake, Elizabeth was an old woman. She also was described as not being able to bear children. She and her husband were child, uh, childless. That is, until God intervened. Moreover, Elizabeth and Zechariah are described as being good people. They were, quote, righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commands and regulations of God. Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron, the elder brother of and then spokesperson for Moses, and was the first priest of Israel. In the manner in which she lived, Elizabeth carried on the proud tradition of the priesthood. Elizabeth becomes part of the Christmas story through her kinship with Mary. Tradition holds that despite their age difference, perhaps as many as 75 years, they were cousins. It's more more likely likely that that Elizabeth was was Mary's Mary's aunt. aunt. But But kinship kinship brought brought them together. together. But not not only that, that, they were pregnant at the same time and under unusual circumstances. Elizabeth was well past her childbearing years, and Mary had no relations with any man. Perhaps it was the coincidence of two unusual pregnancies that led Mary to hasten to Elizabeth's house that day, as described in today's text. Or perhaps Mary wanted to see if the wondrous things told her by the angel Gabriel were true. Whatever the reasons, she could not have anticipated the reception she received. Now, we would have expected Mary to be the deferential one. Elizabeth was older of the two by at least 75 years. Elizabeth and Zechariah were esteemed members of the community, whereas Mary was a girl of 14 unmarried and pregnant. 
And uh, Mary was a guest in Elizabeth's home. But when Mary arrives, it is Elizabeth who is humbled, feeling as if she did not deserve such an esteemed visit. She says to Mary, quote, and why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? The deference of Elizabeth to Mary is depicted in this painting by the Italian painter Ghirlandaio. It raises the question, how did Elizabeth know that Mary was to become the mother of her Lord? She did not hear it from an angel, nor was it told to her in a dream or a vision. The angel Gabriel visited Zechariah and only told him that Elizabeth would soon bear a child and they were to name him John. When Zechariah expressed his unbelief, the angel rendered him mute. So he was unable to tell Elizabeth what little he had heard. Even if he could, he had received no news to share about Mary. It was only when Mary arrived that Elizabeth concluded she was carrying the promised Messiah. As far as we can tell, two things happened. First, she felt something in her body. When Mary arrived and greeted Elizabeth, her child leaped in her womb. Secondly, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With the Spirit's help, Elizabeth was able to understand the message her body was giving her, leading her to believe that Mary would become the mother of her Lord. Elizabeth's deep intuitive sense made her one of the first to recognize that Jesus was the Christ and as such would be the compass that guided her life. The disciples and the first eyewitnesses to Jesus were slow to recognize this. Even when he was among them, teaching them, healing the sick and casting out demons, they could not accept his authority. It was not until he was raised from the dead that they could say with conviction, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But Elizabeth recognized this before Jesus was born. That is why I submit Elizabeth is the person in the Christmas story we should emulate the most. For we too have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, allowing it to act within us. It will confirm with our body, with our very being, the authority of Jesus. And when we allow this to happen, the convergence of the Holy Spirit with our being, we will feel joy from the soles of our feet to the top of our head, the joy that comes from knowing God has sent God's Messiah, the one we place at the top of our lives like the star on a Christmas tree. So let us invite the Holy Spirit in to do its work, uniting body and soul so that we may feel the true joy of Christmas. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, who in Christ sent us your promised Messiah, we confess our slow, slowness to accept his sovereignty. We allow other things to take the most important place in our lives. We confess our inability to feel joy as we seek joy in lesser things. We confess our rejection of your greatest gift, the guiding star that can lead us through every storm. We are thankful for your patience as we try every door of error before knocking on the true door of life. We are thankful for showing us in Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. And for not leaving us utterly lost in a confusing world. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit to shine light when we have lost our way we pray for others in their need. We pray for those who are sick, that you will restore them to strength. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, that you will wipe away every tear. We pray for those who are discouraged, that you will give them signs of your presence. We pray for everyone who is weary of the pandemic, especially doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers, that you will give them the strength to persevere. We pray for those who've, whose lives have been appended by the recent tornadoes, that you will give them relief. We praise you as the God of creation who cares for what you have made. We praise you as the God of history who is involved in all that we say and do. We praise you as the God of hope, who is leading your creation to your great purpose. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue in prayer by praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today. Please plan to join us on Christmas Eve as we uh, have our online Christmas Eve service. It should be available, oh, about 6 p.m. in the evening. Go now in peace and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always, amen. Thank you.